Here we'll see a side-by-side -side comparison of the Tektronix RSA 5126A against an Agilent PXA equipped with a real-time spectrum analyzer option, both using the real-time modes. On the left-hand side, we see the Tektronix instrument. On the right-hand side is Agilent, both looking at about 1900 megahertz for the U.S. cellular band. And the first thing the spectrum manager may want to do is look at a wider span to see more signals of interest. Um, not just in one area. With Agilent, I do have 160 megahertz, but with Tektronix, I can sweep up to the entire frequency range of the instrument, in this case shown at 2 gigahertz. The next thing I did with the Tektronix is reduce the resolution bandwidth so I can see further down into the noise. I can still reduce RBWs on Agilent, but it's not as much flexibility. I can control the Tektronix RSA display like I would any other spectrum analyzer with similar controls. The next thing I'm able to do on the Tektronix instrument is to zoom in a particular 56 megahertz area of interest to find a signal of interest that happens to be a wireless LAN access point, and then I can trigger on any signal that I see within that real-time bandwidth. So with the Agilent instrument, triggers are available, but not this density trigger. So I now have the Agilent PXA set up to the same frequency as the Tektronix RSA. I'm actually seeing different signals because these were recorded at different times. But for the purposes of this discussion, just looking at the spectrogram displays that I have on both instruments. Now I, can sh I see the real-time spectrogram on both boxes after the Agilent's finished its alignment. And I can stop the RSA, the Tektronix RSA, at any time and scroll through the signal history if I want to go back and look for particular events that I just saw on the screen. And they see the orange trace that updates along with that. I don't have that same capability or that same flexibility with Agilence. Um, also, like I showed previously, we have the DPX density trigger that allows me to trigger on any signal density that crosses a threshold within the rectangular area. And if I've set the RSA up now to record about 10 milliseconds of data after a trigger event's been satisfied, uh, I can do further analysis on that. And you see on this new four panel display on the left-hand side with the RSA, I've got a spectrogram in the lower left with the little red T trigger position indicated there. It shows when the triggered event happened. I've got the spectrum in the upper right showing the spectrum display there. And then also in the upper left, I have the time overview showing the overall time history there. I have similar displays in Agilent's uh, PXA, but I don't have the same ability to control the instrument. With Agilent, I can record signals with their VSA software, the 89600, which is not being shown here, but I still don't have the same flexibility, and I certainly don't have the flexibility built into the real-time display that I'm showing here. So that prevents you from correlating markers. It prevents you from capturing a signal, changing parameters when I replay that signal to find out more about what happened based on a particular trigger condition that occurred. Tektronix RSA has real-time display with traditional spectrum analyzer controls, so I have an ability to discover signals and then drive the instrument like I would a regular spectrum analyzer. Tektronix has more advanced real-time capabilities like swept DPX and density triggers that allow me, again, to control the instrument like I would a regular spectrum analyzer when I'm using real-time displays, as well as trigger within the real-time bandwidth on any signal I see on the screen. Tektronix has an integrated user interface that helps me more easily arrive at the answer, whether it's correlating multiple domains to do troubleshooting, or pull apart a signal to find multiple attributes to figure out exactly what kind of signal has been found for a signal of interest. Uh, compared to Agilent, there are options for the RTSA, but it's really a signal discovery tool by itself. It doesn't really go much further than simply discovery of the signal, which you can do with Tektronix as well, but it lacks the ability to perform more in-depth analysis or troubleshooting of signals of interest. I thank you for your time. Please visit tektronix.com for more information. Thanks.